Shalom. I am Rabbi Nathan Davidovich, speaking to you on behalf of the webyeshiva.org, speaking to you from Ephrat, Israel. I'm going to discuss this week's Parsha, which is Bishalach, but also I'm going to tie in some of the lessons that we learn, not only from the Parsha, which is all this Shabbos is called Shabbos Shira because we have the Song of the Sea. But we also have the, the mana, the man that was given to the Bnei Israel, children of Israel in the desert. And then today, just right now, we've just finished Tu Bishvat in Israel. There's a connection between all of these that I feel gives us an important lesson as to how we have to have Amun in God, faith in God. First of all, just a general a general comment as it's it's brought by the Nativo Shalom. He says, Call Mashinechto Batora, in a kosherak mashuhayu ba'avar. Everything that you see in the Torah isn't connected only to what was in the past. It's, it applies to every Jew forever. So as I've said many times, these are not stories, these are a guidepost to life. Let's talk about, first of all, Tu B'Shvat that just ended. Tu B'Shvat is referred to in the Mishnah as one of the four New Years. It's the New Year for the trees. Now, what, what's the, the key about a New Year? The, new, the key about a New Year is Hitachot, to renew, to renew, to be a new person, to do something different. But here we see something else. When does Tu B'Shvat come? Tu B'Shvat comes basically for what most countries are in the middle of winter. It comes at the end of, suppose at the end of the rainy season in Israel. And typically, you look outside and you don't really see anything happening. But the sap is growing in the trees. Even though you don't see it, the trees are renewing. God is giving life to the trees. We see God working behind the scenes, so to speak, in a hidden way to produce beautiful things. That's Tu B'Shvat. This Parsha, we have the, you know, the Jews have left Egypt and they're at the Red Sea or the Reed Sea. It's probably more accurate. And they see the Egyptian army pursuing them. Uh, and they're surrounded. They, they can't, you know, they go back. They, they can't go back towards the Egyptian army. They're, they're, they're on the way to kill them or take them back to slavery. They have only one choice, to go into the sea. And miraculously, the sea not only split, they were able to cross over the sea uh, on dry land. You can imagine uh, the bottom of the sea has to be very muddy or very sandy. Not only did it split, but the land was dry and they crossed over the other side and they were able to see when the Egyptians tried to follow them, the Egyptians were all killed in the in the sea except for one. They say that at the the the, the Yamsuf, at the, the splitting of the sea, the wonders that the Jewish people were able to witness were so great that even the most simple person, the simplest maidservants who had no education nonetheless was able to see wonders that even Chizkiyo Hanovi, the prophet Chizkiyo, was not able to see. Greater than that. That's how wondrous it was. And the people realized, and this is the key of, of Yamsuf, is that all these years in Egypt, they, they couldn't figure out what's going on. Why is God doing this to us? Here at the Yamsuf, when the sea is splitting, they finally realized that everything that was was destined to happen happens now. And everything that happened was for the good. They finally realized that. And then go later on in the in the parsha, we have the story of the mana. So what, what happens? 
you know, the Jewish people uh, have a habit in the desert, certainly, of complaining a lot. Uh, I guess some of us still complain today about various things. Complaining is not good. Uh, but what happened here is the B'nai Israel went to Moshe and they say, you know, we should have died in Egypt uh, rather than, being, than dying here in the desert where we have no food. You, you brought us here to, to kill this whole people with hunger. So God, hearing that, said to Moses, said, I will make bread for bread fall from heaven. on, and the people will go out, Velaktu, and they will gather, Devar Yom Biyomo every single day, Laman Anasanu, so that I can prove Ayelech Batarasi Imlo. I can see, I can test them to see if they are following the Torah or not. And then a little bit later in the in the parsha about man, it says, it "says leak to me manu." It says, "Gather, gather the mana, gather the man." Every man according, everybody according to what you need, what you what your needs are, uh, according to the number of people, and it says. Uh, that the children of Israel did this, Vayokatu, and they gathered Hamarba Bahamami. Some gathered more, some gathered less. That's that's basically a, a quick synopsis of what the Torah says about the mana. Remendel Rebbe Remendela asks, why is this parsha of uh, of the man brought at this point. Why doesn't this? Why does it come before Kriya Satora, before Kabbalah Satora? Why does it come before the Torah is given to us? And the answer is because God wants to prepare us to to put us in the right frame of mind. He, uh, it's Rebbe of Rebbe. Sorry, Rebbe of Rebbe. He said, you know. For 30 days after they left Egypt, they brought food with them. That was a miracle in itself. It didn't spoil. Why didn't that just, that miracle continue? And he said, because God had to show people that you have to approach God. You have to ask God. Uh, you have to ask God for things. And that you do your little bit of hishtadlut, then God will provide for you. But it was interesting because even those who took more, then their allotted share, the additional part rotted. Those that took less, the part was made up. So they all had the enough enough to eat. And that's we learned from that the whole concept of Parnasa. Of God is God has established for each of us uh, an amount that we should earn every year, amount that we'll make. And no matter what you do. As long as you put your little little effort in there, God will make, see to it that that happens. God is wanting to teach us that we have to have a muna in God. We have to believe in God, have faith in God, that God will take care of all of our needs. Not all of our wants, but all of our needs. And then to discourage us from doing anything that would be contrary, contrary to the Torah. Not to steal to, to get your food, not to cheat, but to deal honorably. If you do that, you have faith in Hashem, then Hashem will, will give us what we need. And the the man, the mana is to remind us that the the, the most important Jew thing that a Jew must do is that he must have faith. That that God is going to fulfill our needs. God commanded that the the man, the mana, a little bit of it be placed, be preserved for generations. And in fact, when you went into the base of Migdash, into the temple, you saw a container of mana there to remind us always that God always brings bread from heaven. Uh, always brings the bread from heaven, just as He brings the rain. God brings the rain. 
So God brings us our needs. And we just have to believe that and not look for other reasons why things may not be going well. Look for our relationship to God. Take these lessons and learn to have faith in Hashem for everything, not just Parnassah, but everything that happens to recognize that it is Hashem who is in charge of everything. This year was a memory of our daughter, Shira Rochmat, Alternus Nata Behuva, Shira David Avich Pransky, whose 12th year site is this coming Shabbos. I wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for listening on behalf of the webyeshiva.org.